fasten your seatbelt. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Chrissy is hilarious. Chrissy, have you ever heard of the comedian Basha K. Ali? No, that sounds like something you yell at before you blow up a plane. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty seconds remaining. Like you know, what you say? I stand up to I have any disrespect for you at all. I was very confused by the title "Everything Everywhere All at Once" because that's also what we call it when the ass takes off his shirt. <laughs> 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 I shouldn't be up here. I should be in school on the other side of the ocean. Hello. Welcome to another episode of the Chrissy Mayer Podcast. We're on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, Rumble, Rockfin, all the places where you can hear a fine podcast such as this. Uh, yes, very exciting. I'm a, I'm a married woman, everyone, but that's that's not gonna stop me from going back on the road and doing stand up. I uh, just had a really great show last weekend in Jersey at Tiff's Ale House. I just shared a really fun crowd work moment uh, to my Instagram and my Twitter. Check it out; it's really funny. There was a guy in the crowd with a with a very weird name, and I just really enjoyed roasting him and his whole family. <laughs> over their choice in name for their son. Next show is going to be Friday, August 11th at the Secret Group in Houston, te Texas. You can get tickets now on Eventbrite or just go straight to my website, chrissymayer.com. Uh, nice early show at 7 o'clock at the Secret Group in Houston, Texas. I will be there uh, for Anime Matsuri, which is a convention happening in Houston, Texas from... Thursday, August 10th, through that whole weekend. So I might be making a little bit of a stop in Austin. Um, I might have a little, little Austin moment, little Houston moment. I'll be all over Texas. So hope to see you at that show at The Secret Group. It's going to be fun. And Lila Hart will be opening for me. She's so much fun. I love performing with her and just palling around. Um, yes, I think that's about it for now. I'm so excited to have this guest back on the show. She is a friend. She is a podcaster. She's a content creator. She's a mom. She's a quadruple threat. We're going to talk about all sorts of fun girl topics today and man topics. This stuff applies to everybody. Uh, welcome back to the show. Candace Horbox. Hello. How are you? Hello. Thank you for having me back. It's good to see you. It's good to be seen. I was just complimenting Candace about her sepia toned set. It's like very calming looking. Thank you. Yeah. Sometimes we get into some crazy subjects. So I try to provide a space that's like a little zen and a little bit welcoming. It's so important. You're, and I think this is something that it's kind of our job as women to keep track of. And I know it sounds like, uh, like a thing that doesn't matter. I think we, it's so easy to get wrapped up in, in work and doing the, and prioritizing, like obviously your family taking care of kids, but then also bringing in money, you know, your career. And I think that the things that fall by the wayside and, and you won't notice that you've ignored them until you're like, why do I feel anxious? Why do I feel uh, like every time I look around, there's clutter, there's piles. And I think I think your space is something that is so easy to ignore. And I was really inspired. I was listening to you speak with this woman. I can't remember her name, but she was talking about the importance of even just like setting the tone of your bedroom and how that can result in more quality intimacy time. She was all about, you know, scheduling that time to be intimate with your partner, which like sounds like a bummer to a lot of people. Like it should be spontaneous. It should just happen. But it's like, how many things in our life just happen? Like I would love to spontaneously go to the gym, but unless I schedule mm -hmm. it, it's just never going to happen. And I like that she mentioned, you know, if you want to get back in touch with your body, all of us are stuck in our heads. You, you know, you need to speak with the language of your body, which is your five senses. So it's like being aware of how your space looks, smells, feels, you know, if that means just swapping out, I don't know, maybe getting better sheets or 
which is like, huge. It sounds yeah. frivolous, but like Does. sheets are the basic. That's the foundation, right? You want to roll into them and feel like seductive and sexy and warm and welcome. And like, you don't want them to be scratching at you and then you're itchy and you're like, what's happening? <laughs> I don't want to be here. Yeah, there's like a there's like a set of sheets and like as soon as like frank frank gets in he just starts like moving his legs around he's like what's wrong with these sheets like why is this different than the other sheets like it's it is funny it's like, <laughs> like okay watching him figure it out and then i go all right noted okay that pair is uh gonna go to the to the emergency pile or i don't know it'll go to the spare couch pull out or something but yeah, we were talking like um, I was mentioning that some other people call it pussification or pussifying your environment, which it does not sound appealing to the masculine. However, I tend to believe that it's more like the woman's interest and priority to make sure that the space is all set up and beautiful. Like a guy will have a sofa and a mattress and that's fine and his TV and he's totally OK with that. And a woman is like, I need we need knickknacks on the bookshelves. We need like the books color coordinated. Like I was telling you the um, two simple changes I made in my house was changing out my silverware and changing out my coffee cups. And I immediately felt sexier like I go into the kitchen and I've got my gold silverware and I've got like this these stone made um ceramic like cough like English coffee cups Ooh. with a saucer and the tiny spoon and then you kind of find yourself going throughout the day like with better posture with more of this like seductive goddess energy because like this is my domain like I'm thriving in my domain whereas if the dishes are piled up if I've got like shitty mismatched sheets like these things are all screaming at me all day and then I can't be in my body or be present when it's time to like be intimate with your husband or your wife you know and there's some there's certain people who just would never notice these things and, and by certain people I mean men no like some some men do notice these things but again it's it's the easiest to deprioritize and you might be thinking like really you're gonna buy all new sheets and you're gonna buy all new cups and silverware like that sounds frivolous that sounds wasteful like just use what you have how can you but if you can afford it and i think we spend so much money just meaninglessly on dumb shit like if it's like a, a meal out where you don't have to or starbucks or just dumb mindless amazon shopping like it is cool to think about con it's about consciously and this is specification doesn't even i'm like using this term because it's hilarious to me but it doesn't <laughs> mean making everything look pink and purple and no no no, and no. Roughly. it doesn't mean about like turning it can be dark and moody yeah. right and, and it can still be masculine and sexy and if, especially if you're if you're living with someone else and like they're the opposite sex and it's important to take their needs and taste into account as well not make everything pink and lace no that is for um 14 year old girls in their bedroom it's like once you start living with a man like i i think it's extremely selfish to have like your your bed clothes in like very girly or like pink like over the top pink or purple or i don't know i just think it's like i'm all about the grays the blues yeah, maybe earth tones, like nothing that's going to, you know, sh just scream overly, overly feminine. But I think it's that's a really cool thing to take note of. It's just like look around like I, I've been feeling lately ever since like I got married last month and my room is a, it's a mixture of like it's our bedroom. It's my podcasting corner. It's piles of wedding stuff. It's like piles of books I need to read, piles of laundry that haven't been put away. And it's just like, it's amazing. Anyone can ha do anything in here. <laughs> so I've been like overwhelmed by piles lately. And I've just been yeah, going through and really just trying to throw stuff out. Like I'll take a section of my closet. I know the proper Marie Kondo thing to do is to take all the clothes and go through them. But I'll just take a section out of the closet and be like, all right, let me see if I can get rid of like two things here. Um, and that that does help. I think it's, I have a, maybe it's cause I was raised. My parents like didn't have a lot of money, but it's this, I have it very much ingrained. Like unless something is threadbare and falling off of you, do not throw it out. Don't give it away. And I have to retrain myself. Like I have very good friends who have over the years, like come over and help me. And they'll be like, Christy, like those are poor people's shoes. <laughs> throw those away. Or like <laughs> that dress makes you look bigger. It's not serving you. Donate it. Like anything that makes you look or feel bigger is like have no qualms about about donating that stuff 
Right. And then you don't want to reinforce a scarcity mindset or a famine mindset. So you want to live in this place of abundance so you can have gratitude for the things that you spent money on and then say thank you for the you know, how you served me and how I utilized you and then donate it and give it away. And, you know, that's um, like that's of service. You're providing something to someone else, which is also beautiful who might not be able to afford it. And then you're also reinvesting in yourself and and saying, like, I deserve to feel calm and serene and I deserve to, like, feel beautiful or handsome or whatever it is. And I think sometimes we think that unless it's an absolute necessity that we're uh, we're being greedy or we're being frivolous or it doesn't really mean anything. But I think that's one way to express self-love to yourself. Yeah. And it's, and it's, you can just start with a corner of one room or you can start with one drawer Mm -hmm. uh, and just like, it, it does make a difference because I'll tell myself like, no, I need to be like always working, always doing something for my career or to make money or like, crushing it and then i'll be like but why can't i focus why can't i calm down it's because like the piles are slowly attacking me Mm -hmm. yeah and i guess that's uh more of a female thing so they say that women's focus tends to be a lot more diffused so you'll literally see everything wrong in a room and it'll be kind of yelling at you like that sock or like his underwear it's yelling at you pick me up pick me up whereas he can walk right over it because it's not like men are very mission focused so it's a little yeah. bit more direct so the sock and the underwear have nothing to do with his mission so he just he literally doesn't see it so we just have different brains um so there's this thing where they kind of say women tend to castrate men a lot and it's because we expect men to behave like the perfect woman. And when they don't, then we yell at them for not being the perfect woman. So why didn't you pick up those fucking socks? Well, he's not a woman and he's not seeing them and they're not yelling at him in the same way. So there's just um, there's this book called The Queen's Code and I'm actually having her on my podcast in like two weeks. And I'm so fucking excited because this book should be given to every single female before she starts dating like before she enters the world before she's like allowed to really interact with men because it it just changes so much fundamentally and you can be a a woman that's like i love men i'm not castrating them i respect them and you don't realize in like these little micro moments that you are doing it like the moment that you emasculate him by calling him a name or saying he's lazy or saying he's stupid or super worse out of him and um it's been life-changing reading that book so i've like i'm very selectively giving it to people because if you give it to the wrong woman it's going to be used entirely the wrong way but it's um it's it's incredible would you say it's like would you categorize this book into sort of like a trad or a conservative i wouldn't there's definitely some because it is allowing the man to be the provider and I'm like I'm all for that I think that that is like in, that's ingrained in the masculine and we should it's the difference between having to have them provide for us right like not having choice and letting them provide for you like you also getting fulfillment from that and um kind of having that as an expression of your love and your union so there are some more like quote traditional values but it's not it's not like political yeah Mm -hmm. that's so interesting i i found for me like i when i first started dating frank i i would exactly that like get upset like why aren't these picked up why aren't uh, and then go number one. First of all, I can't say that unless all my shit in my room is picked up at all times and I'm perfect. Like I can't I, I really can't criticize unless I have my shit together. And then like number two, I realize like I'm not like mad at him. I'm mad that I don't have more time to. And then we started living with each other and those, those same irritations crept up. And then I realized like once I got fired from my day job, I was like, whoa, I was actually mad at myself for not having more time to pick up. I was not mad at him for not picking up. You can't expect a straight man to pick up and the way that women pick up a room, you know, and like tidy up. I was mad that I had to dedicate like 40 plus hours a week commuting and doing a job that I hated. And I would have much rather, you know, no one loves to pick up socks or do laundry, but it's like, I wasn't mad at him. I was mad that I just didn't have the time to do more of it. Yeah, it's just easier to take it out on your partner because at the end of the day, a lot of us use them as punching bags because we know that they're going to stay there. We know that they love us. We know that they're going to forgive us. We can't take it out where we have that uncertainty, which is the boss, which is the job, which is X, Y, Z. Ugh, yeah, my boss sucked. Him firing <laughs> me was like the greatest blessing. Like I, my, and then I realized like, oh, I've never really liked any of my jobs. I liked the first job I ever had, which was like being a lifeguard and a diving coach. But I think of every like 
office assistant job I've had, I've been I've been resentful by like week two. <laughs> Which is hysterical. We were talking about that video clip before we went live and it's this young woman and she's like, well, if you're a woman and you're in the office and you automatically get respect and then that's worthy. Like what? <laughs> we'll, we'll play the clip. Ooh, is it this clip here? Yes. Okay. And this was tweeted by uh, Richard Cooper, who I'm not following, but I'm I based on your recommendation, I'm going to follow. Uh, and this is OnlyFans summed up. Do we know who this girl is? Do we have context for? I don't. Okay. Okay, she's just like on a pod. I don't necessarily recommend that guy either. Oh, okay. Yet you're relying on creepy, disgusting men who think you are disgusting and trash to ironically pay your bills, which is probably the most degrading thing in the entire world. Whereas actually, if you were in an office, it would be a lot less degrading. You could actually have respect in an office. Mm -hmm. And do not get offended when you come into the dating pool oh, is and that, dating um, world and you are seen as a Jamie low Kennedy value woman. In my to? eyes, you are. In every man's eyes, you are. And uh, don't get offended when people don't want to marry you, don't want you to be their girlfriend. You're going to hit the real world eventually. Um, it's just amount of time. And no one with any level of like a brain would ever respect someone who does that. But there's a lot to unpack. I there. don't go on the internet and expect people not to judge me. You cannot be a sex worker and expect people not to judge you. I agree with that. So just don't complain about the outcome. Go get your bag. Yes. And then deal with no one thinking that you're a valuable human and Oof. also bringing just shame to your family name as well. You're a feminist doing hands. That's empowering. Yep. Oh, interesting. She seems lovely. She seems uh not happy. She seems like angry. I want to know, like if I were interviewing this girl, man, I wish I knew who this was. Uh, I would be like, what? why are you angry? Like, what is, what is bothering you? It's like, do you have a sister doing this? Do you have a friend doing this? Like, what's your connection to these feelings? I think for a lot of people like that, that have such a, a huge response to people that they've never met, the total strangers making decisions that don't um, have anything to do with them. I think it's that expression, like that total free, what seems unbridled expression is a reminder of the cage that she's in. And mm. rather than have any sort of self-reflection or go down to first principles of why she believes what she believes, why her moral you know, code is where it's at, why she thinks all these, deci these decisions make you an unworthy human, which is such a huge – like that's such like, such a huge statement to make about, again, someone you, you don't know. Like are you a good person? That has nothing to do with if you have a fucking OnlyFans. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, rather than do hard work, it's just easier to just project that out onto somebody else. And that's up for the individual to decide. Not every one of us is built for every career. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's easy uh, to make the case like not every woman is built for a nine to five. Most women aren't built to be CEOs. So it's like, how come we can't make the case like not every woman is built to be uh, some kind of a sex worker or do OnlyFans, but some women are. And mm -hmm. some women, like it really doesn't hold them back. I know many, I, I definitely, I'm very good friends with a couple girls who do OnlyFans and have very healthy marriages. So yeah. it's like, you can't tell me that no one's going to respect them. So it's like, you clearly have just, you don't know anybody who, who is living this life. No, and you can do anything within integrity and then out of integrity. It doesn't matter. You can do the office job with integrity and you can do an office job out of alignment. And the same thing goes with sex work. You can do it from a place that's an authentic expression of your sexuality. And you can also go into it from like a very broken place where you're trying to like fill this endless void of whatever hurt or trauma is is present. So there's multiple multiple energies and ways to do the same thing. So just widely say all sex work is bad or anyone who's doing sex work uh, must have daddy issues or must be doing drugs or must have no other options i mean that's just a pejorative you can't do that yeah i was i was getting some information about who this woman is um so this is this she was on jamie kennedy's podcast jamie kennedy is a comic he's an actor he's he's been in like the screen movies i think he's probably best known for that so this woman that he was with was named emily wilson she's an online personality her twitter is emily saves america <laughs> uh, they were on this is only a 10 minute clip and it's titled how i got fired from conservative news um this is interesting i want to just hear a little bit about her with. some girl came for you online yeah like i said didn't know who this girl was and so she she decided to write about nine paragraphs about how i'm like a racist white supremacist 
and I hate trans people online mm. um, okay. a while ago. And then ironically, because most people don't realize I live in a really hipster neighborhood because I'm always posting in Beverly Hills. Um, Beverly Hills. I went to go eat with a group of my friends one night. Look at the green I juice. Like, <laughs> I went to her because I don't play. I keep it real, especially in real life. Why does she have a and chip like, on hey, her shoulder? You know She's I angry. Good. And she was like, no. No, and I was like, "Oh, I'm like uh, Emily Saves America." I remember when you wrote all those horrible things. You probably never thought you would see me in person, huh? Yeah, this must be a little bit weird, right? Especially when I'm in your place of work. I was like, "I wonder if I showed the owner like what you've said about me. If that would be a good reflection." Uh, Considering like we just spent about seventeen hundred dollars, just bought this place out. I goes, so "Technically, right now you kind of work for me, mm -hmm. don't you?" Interesting. Wow, loves power, huh? And wrote mm. that I attacked her, I stalked her, I assaulted her, and then saw me again in real life and like attacked me. I'm like, you're just like nuts. Saw you again? Where? Oh, I was getting tacos and I heard someone yelling and I like paused my AirPods and it was her. Huh. And I just was like, oh my God, you just. Yeah, I'm and looking she, at her Twitter. She she's friends. not super active on Twitter, but she does. She is wow. uh, Emily Saves America on Twitter as well. Wow. $3.99. $3 I was like, I'm going to pay for it for one month and at my birthday party, I'm going to stream it on the wall the whole Jamie time. Jamie is like did very chill. He's, I want to see if they break wow. down. What's the, the basic price? $3.99. She's a mean girl. I just have it to look. That is a little bit seen that way. I'm just trying to like what the price was. figure out why. Wow. Okay. You are definitely just getting warmed up. You, I'm just saying, if you come for me online, I see you in person. I'm beelining it up to you. You would never do it to me. Like, and it's so masculine right there. Calls. She's yeah. so yeah. tough. I'm gonna, gonna beeline to, to you. you. Yeah, yeah. Um, Conquer. You said you got fired from Fox News. No, no, no. I was let go from Newsmax. They actually give me. You're oh. on Newsmax. Yeah, they gave me oh God. Okay. To take she down on one of my Newsmax. posts. That explains why she's angry. Is the post going to get me banned if we talk about it? Actually, it's like the most like liberal post I've ever posted. I almost want to archive it. What's the post? I was like making a joke because all these like little right wing annoying trolls were like coming after me. And then I was uh -oh. like, oh, you don't shut up. I'm going to like fuck your dad and what? Your mom and then take your phone. <laughs> fuck your That's dad, it? Become your mom. Take your phone away. You can't say dumb shit on the internet anymore. That's fine. That's, that's what I'm saying. Cute, but also, I guess. like, I'm talking about sleeping with a hypothetical fake dad. Yes. I didn't even target anyone. Yes. And so news Maybe she hasn't dad. figured out what she wants to be. Enough, mm -hmm. commentator. What? I love Thousand Pound Sisters. A good escapism. Thank you. Okay. If you're watching the news, someone is paying for them to say something. So turn the news off and you'll literally, your happiness will go up like 90% overnight. Okay. Um, I, they, I they, want to interview her. <laughs> yeah, I don't have some fancy school or education. We're paid to be hot and party. Those chicks, yeah. yeah. I mean, expands though because I really do have. Huh? You know, Emily saves America. Okay, I'm gonna have to look into her. I'm intrigued. She's not tweeting much, which tells me she's more of an Instagram chick. I bet. I mean, you can tell by looking at her; she's probably an Instagram chick. Mm hmm. Yeah, she's pretty. <laughs> Right, but I not feel like just being pretty. It's there's a Instagram energy you just get from somebody that she has. I can't ex I can't describe. I feel it. like that's Twitter energy. She's like really fierce. <laughs> yeah, that's and combative. Shocked. There's not more. I want to know her story, and why is she so judgmental of of women who do OnlyFans? Because it's like, if if she truly believes that men don't respect women in any kind of uh, sex work, like, isn't that better for you? Like, isn't that oh, more men for you, less competition for you? Like also though, like, is it, is it an aligned man that it's going to be mistreating a woman just because he doesn't agree with her decisions and like her lot choice of work or how she uses her body? I, I don't know. I find like a, a secure masculine like a real man like a, a good person you treat someone on how you experience them right or if you get like really spiritual it's treat everybody the same and i don't know i don't think that like because you disagree with someone's stance on anything that you can dehumanize them and then that somehow makes you in the right yeah and there, and you also have to take into consideration the like there are some women who get into either sex work or only fans and it is the thing that propels them to write a book or 
support their kid or yeah what if it's putting kids. food on the yeah. table you're gonna put judgment there like what if it's the thing that she is keeping like the mortgage paid and up to date and she's being able to have more time to basically be a stay-at-home mom and then still be able to pay the bills like what if there is no dad what if that's not yeah. her choice right what if the husband died what if the husband left what if the husband was abusive and now she's in a position where she doesn't want to outsource child care because that fucking sucks but she also needs to pay all of the bills because the dad's you you know, not showing up for whatever reason. So, oh yeah, that's terrible. No, I'd rather go work 40 to 80 hours a week to make maybe a hundred K, which most places in this country is not a lot of money and then outsource my child, my child care. So I see my kid three hours if I'm lucky before I put them to bed and rinse and repeat. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. integral. That's aligned. That's something that's re- worth respecting. Get out of here. And I've I've seen people make the exact opposite case that that office work and I having worked in an office for 15 plus years, uh, I don't I have not felt respected at my office jobs. Like I have slowly over time been guilted to not even take a lunch hour anymore. I have been uh, I mean, I had a boss who tried to guilt me and being his ghost writer for him. He really wanted to book write a book I'm like that's something you pay a whole extra person to do. And I'm mm-hmm. your executive assistant like you think you can just like guilt me into like writing a book for you. I had a boss like that was sick in the hospital for several months and I went to go visit him and he handed me a bedpan to to empty out. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I, I think that's that's worse than just, you know, posting a photo of yourself in a bikini. And getting money from it. So, right. Even if it's not a bikini, even if they're yeah. nudes, right? Who are yeah. you to tell someone how they're supposed to be living their life? Like, why don't you try practicing a little bit of non judgment and, and compassion and empathy and love? Like, not everything do you have to f- force your beliefs onto somebody else. Like, you can sit, sit there and have discernment and say, not for me. That's fine if that's your decision. Just not for me. We don't have to make it a battle. I don't need to make you bend the knee to my will or vice versa. Like I'm not saying you have to accept my decisions, but but at the same token, don't make me have to live the life that you lead either, right? It's just just not for me and walk away. That's it. Don't be an ass. Yeah, it's very easy to judge. And maybe this is just part of like I listened to this Emily girl and she sounds like a lot of, um, I guess, like right wing or conservative influencers and and who knows i maybe i could be like lumped into that group too but i think it's uh, maybe this is part of the pendulum swinging back and maybe it's going to become more in vogue to be more modest or i don't know i think overall maybe our culture is i wouldn't say too sexual but it's it's too much i think too much being exposed to too young of of a of kids basically like it's I worry, I'm not saying this well, but I worry with as the pendulum swings back away from this hyper woke LGBT, you know, the, the the social construct of like the the glamorization of like the, the whole, you know, the rainbow squad. Right. I feel like it as our culture sort of swings back from that, I, I don't want the the good parts to be demonized like what we were just talking about, making your space like sex friendly or intimacy friendly or like dressing well for your shape like i hope this doesn't result in like i don't know you're going to be demonized for wearing a tight dress or having cleavage or uh well you are you saw the stuff with the barbie reviews didn't you with margot robbie she was on these red carpets and she was doing all of these pressers for the movie and she's dressed beautifully like she's not in like a hillary clinton plant pant suit and i don't think anyone wants that and i don't think she wants that which is more important but she's dressed beautifully she's dressed in pink dresses a lot of the time obviously the movie's about barbie um she's dressed in like sequenced outfits and they're like well how about we break um the the stereotype and like show that she's more than her looks because right now basically people are dumbing her down because she's attractive so they were saying she's taking away from her intellect and playing into the stereotype by being beautiful and by like dressing up and to me that's like the sexist comment that's going backwards and regressive she should be able to dress however she wants and then use her brain and like it doesn't it doesn't take away in any way it's adding yeah, that sounds like hot phobia to me. Like <laughs> just because someone is hot doesn't mean they can't be smart. And it's like it's it sounds so salty. It sounds so much. <laughs> oh, like let me bring up this <laughs> article. I can't wait to see the Barbie movie. It's like my childhood in a nutshell. 
I don't even know this mama me hitacom. I just love this headline. The Barbie movie has flirted with diversity, but has it done enough? Not every movie needs to be all <laughs> things to all people. Okay. Mm -hmm. if, if a Barbie movie is going to be a good Barbie movie, uh, I hope it doesn't address diversity. That's going to take away from uh, Barbie issues and Barbie stuff. And I want to see outfits. I want to see fashion. She looks like she's the perfect casting for mm -hmm. this role. I think so too. But it's like people are so tired of like, oh, yeah, our, our Barbie movie isn't doing enough to <laughs> solve the problems of the world. Are you kidding me? Well, this I heard they like... wanted Gal Gadot at first, right? And then she said no, which it would have been oh, a weird Barbie. Like, she's God. stunning. I wonder if that was before or after they were considering Amy Schumer for the role. Is that a joke? They really were. There was going to be a different version of this movie. Oh, like a funny starring, Barbie? Starring Amy Schumer. And it was yeah, either going to be funny or it was going to be... Fem more feminist or something uh, hmm. you know there's headlines that like schumer dropped out because it wasn't feminist enough and i'm just like i feel like she just couldn't keep the weight off i think they were just like yeah she's she's older and it's a thing when you're older in hollywood and you're overweight like you're gonna look you're gonna be cast even older so it's like she she's not in shape anymore it's like she's she's done so mm -hmm. yeah that's an interesting perspective to take barbie to no one wants to watch overweight Barbie. That's not. No, I just mean, go outside Mar your house and look at the, <laughs> like the average American woman. Yeah, it's Margot not... is perfect for that role. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of hot phobia going on. Let me see. Oh, Matthew Hammond. What are the best? Oh, what are the best sheets? I found some bamboo sheets that are great. Well, it pains me to say this, but actually, my current favorite sheets are from Target. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I feel conflicted. Like the Target sheets are very soft and crispy. This one brand that I, that I've gotten, but I'm sure there's other ones that are good. I'm really trying like not to shop there as much anymore or at all. Mm. I, I always wonder about... if that's going to make a difference. Do you know what I mean? Oh, like uh boycotting. Yeah like, yeah. like, is it just like cutting off your nose to spite your face kind of situation? Right. I guess if it's going to result in you spending more or spending the same and not getting the, like the same kind of product that you like, is it really worth it? I don't know. Or did the dip in sales, was that enough to make an impact? Right. Because we love convenience. So eventually a lot of people go back. Yeah. Bowl and Branch are my favorite sheets. Worth the investment, though. I've had mine for over five years and they're still amazing. Bowl and Branch? Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I like those a they lot. They should sponsor you. <laughs> no one wants to sponsor me. <laughs> I'm untouchable. <laughs> Haven't oh. you seen the clip? I'm an unworthy person. Oh my gosh. How does like how does that make you feel? Because I'm sure you're, you know, we see clips like that all the time. There's mm -hmm. so much judgment. Oh yeah, there was someone in the chat saying I shouldn't have my children, which is like <laughs> go ahead and test this mama bear baby. One of us is not gonna make it out. I promise. <laughs> I I'm sure that'll ending. be that'll be great for your kids. Man, they're mm -hmm. gonna really thrive being away from their right. Yeah, mom. put them in a home. That's great. Put them in the system or where half of them go, not half of them. You can actually probably look up the number. A good amount of the children aren't even found and they end up in trafficking rings but yeah better not have a mom that has an olf they'll be much better get out of here it's a very easy uh take to have just be like oh yeah just give them to the just give them to their it's dad. lazy thinking it's just lazy yeah. dogmatic thinking oh andrew thomas hey beautiful chrissy and beautiful candace great job on the podcast candace oh thank you andrew andrew's the best Okay, Max. Thanks, K-Max. What do Chrissy and Candace think of the new laws on IDs? In Virginia, Pornhub has shut down as a protest to Virginia's government ID requirement to use the site. I think they don't want minors viewing porn sites. I am not familiar with this new law. So I don't think it's about that at all. I think it's um, kind of like a rope-a-dope. So look over here and then take your legs out from under you. So what happened is, I forget what state, it might have been Utah, implemented something really similar to where there was a government data, uh, government um, 
centralized database for anyone that was going to be looking at adult material. And then it um, almost immediately got hacked. All of the information was leaked. And then the government was like, we are not equipped to keep all of this data, uh, all of this data secure. So then they would have to outsource it to a third party company that's holding on to sensitive material. Because think if someone uh, sees like Joe one, two, three is looking at uh, mom, stepmom porn. Now they can kind of like weaponize that if they want against him or his employer. I don't, it just like it gets there's a real invasion of privacy that's happening there. So I believe in paywalls. I don't think that anything explicit explicit should be available for minors to access as easy as they do. I think that's a huge problem. I think most people with a backbone would agree with that. But then also having big daddy governments know exactly where you are on the internet just kind of seems like a um, an overreach as well. So how do you solve this problem? And where I kind of fundamentally always end up is it's parents. Like parents have to just be on top of their kids and have um, – things like bark installed on every single device so you know what your kid is up to and know who you're hanging out bark is amazing so um it's b-a-r-k it's an app that you can put on your kids and like all of your children's devices it recognizes code and cryptic messaging so if you have a predator that's messaging them the parent will get a notification it's just like a really good way to keep your child safe on the internet and then also safeguard against certain um, websites that you don't want them going on that aren't age appropriate wow what if the kid tries to delete Bark, though? I don't know if that they can see it. Maybe once they get older, like once they get to like 14, 15, 16, they're probably going to be more tech savvy than the parent. But I think there are workarounds. I think it's operated on um, the parent's device. So I don't think you can take it off okay. from the other one. Wow. I I think, um, I don't know, um, my stepson is 12. I still think like, I don't think 12 year olds need to have phones. It's like. No, and if if they do get in one of those um, dumb phones where it's you have a couple numbers programmed and nine one one and your parents, whoever grandparents, and that's it. They don't need social. I think we know that that's terrible for kids too. I think it's really easy to get caught up in adult content and say that the problem kids shouldn't be on that duh of course right like you're only going to have a predator that's going to disagree with that so like duh they also shouldn't be on twitter they also shouldn't be on instagram like there are serious mental health consequences especially for young girls for being on instagram including a massive uh uptick in in adolescent suicide so you're missing the forest for the trees like don't just blame porn like they just shouldn't be on a lot of these um social media sites because it's not good for anyone especially a development mind you could argue that like porn is just as, just as bad for young boys as Instagram and social media are for young girls because of the the competitive nature and the comparison. Like there there are a lot of studies that have just come out with just how bad uh, it is on young girls. Like I was reading about that. And it's the 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 unaliving rates or or unaliving uh, feelings have have really skyrocketed. It's like it's so scary. No, it's terrifying. I can't imagine being a parent I um, of like a, a teenager right now. It's got to be terrifying. I saw this New York Post article yesterday and it was uh, it was about this string of suicides that were happening in like these really prestigious boarding schools, like these schools that were over eighty five thousand dollars a year for high school and middle school. And it was because of all of this pressure that um, is getting put on young people right now. And then you're obviously you're sending your kid away for months at a time. So they're losing that bond within their family, which has got to be devastating during those developmental years. But like, hey, let's just look at OnlyFans moms. Like those are the only moms that are <laughs> bad, not anything else. You have kids hurting everywhere. So I think it comes down to just like making sure that your kid knows you love them and try to remind that th that to them through action. And then the rest of it, we're all going to fuck up. No parent is perfect. But as long as you have the love part down, everything else you can work through and get over. This is an interesting comment from NKFD. Matt Walsh of the Daily Wire doesn't allow his kids on the internet and they don't own any mobile devices until a certain age. I think that's a great idea. It is a great idea. Uh, it can only... At 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 best, it'll distract you from your schoolwork uh, and bonding with your family. And at worst, it could convince you to transition. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's so much more to lose from it than to than what what could be gained by it. Okay, maybe you could start a YouTube channel at a young age or or start making money on social media. That's the only positive, and that's very for a small percentage of. Then you're basically are you 
now are you a performer now it's like you're beginning that as a career and well that's like- one way though right like technology is a tool so in and of itself it's not good or evil i think it's how you use the thing so if you like his stance with his kids I, I saw the clip back when he posted it like there's no internet or technology that they're using and i don't know what age he said what that he was going to introduce it but it was definitely later my kid is three and a half and he's playing coding games i'm there while he's playing them i downloaded them he's three and a half so he can't get into any device without me but he's literally learning to code already so i think that you're you're setting your kid up for a huge disadvantage if you're like absolutely no technology right it's almost you're forcing the thing away instead of figuring out how Mm -hmm. to integrate it um to a healthy level, to a beneficial level, so that they're still on track and that they're going to be able to compete later in the workplace. But it's not for just mindless entertainment. It's like, how can we use this tool to to learn? That's really good. And then maybe one day he can like rewire the smart fridge or something. <laughs> <laughs> or that's right. Or you have like another e- like a another Elon, the f- Elon of the future, right? You can't say you can't have access to technology that would have crushed him. Hmm. Yeah, I think we should treat social media the same way we treat drugs or uh, anything else, like who the kids are hanging around. Um, it's like you just can't you can't take your foot off the gas and be like, oh, I'm sure they're fine. I'm sure they're not looking at anything. <laughs> so mm-hmm, exactly. Yeah. Just awareness, awareness and discernment. Are you still getting a lot of shit? I mean, you must be getting like constantly getting judgment from people like, how dare you be a mom? And it's, I don't even think you're shoot, you haven't shot anything new in years. 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 Like way before way before my first child was even considered or what we were trying. I was having some health issues and I stopped shooting because of that. Um, like my ovaries, I have polycystic ovarian syndrome. So I kept getting these ovaries that were literally the size of lemons. I couldn't shoot and it was crazy painful. I was getting sick all the time, like really nauseous because of it. It was a, it was a huge deal. So I stopped shooting and um, it doesn't matter. It's a forever thing. And it's we're expected to have an objectively perfect past. But what does that mean? Because everyone's offended by someone. It's like if I don't live the exact life that you want for yourself, then somehow what I'm doing is wrong. And it just doesn't make sense. We have such a weird, twisted relationship when it comes to pleasure and sexuality and uh, a lot of inherent shame and guilt. And if someone else doesn't feel that shame or carry that weight with them, there must be something wrong with them there. You know what I mean? It's like, stop. It's the tall poppy, like stop creating attention because you're going to get chopped off i don't agree with that i think especially women i don't we're not censored at all right like i can say whatever no go for it okay so like we literally have this um cluster of nerve like nerve endings right your clitoris that is all its only function is pleasure men don't have anything on their body that doesn't also have like some type of like utility to it so why would you give us something that the sole purpose is is bliss, pleasure, enjoyment. If we're not supposed to have that coupled with that creative energy, like that essence that is human. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I just you can choose to let that shame go. You can you choose to recognize that it was instilled for a purpose, for control, to disconnect you from your body, to get you in your head. We do this with little kids and we're like, oh, raise your hand if you have to go to the bathroom. Oh, never mind. We have 15 minutes. You have to hold it. Don't listen to your body. I'm more in charge of your body than you. I know better than you, right? It's this uh, this fragmentation and this separation of you from, from your wholeness. And I think that's intentional. So you can choose to say, fuck these inflamed systems. Fuck control. I has, have sovereignty over my essence. Pleasure is great. It's supposed to be enjoyed, obviously not completely unbridled, but um, just because I'm choosing to live in a different way and more, I think, more natural, holistic way then I don't know. It just gets me really frustrated. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I think the healthiest way to move forward would be and I think a way for like the the cultural left and the cultural right to come together would be like, yeah, we don't have to lose our, our sense of expression, you know, our sensuality, our sexuality. We can still value that because we can't pretend that those things aren't valued by men and women, that uh, men don't like to look at women who look good and women don't like to make themselves look good, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think we where we can come together is like those things are still important, but maybe we don't have to be, uh, you know, 
giving that to everyone. Maybe we can focus on like making it, making like marriage cool and sexy again, that mar marriage or monogamy is not a death sentence. I think that would be, a, I think it would be cool to see culturally the two being merged together again. Cause it seems like culturally the only way to be like fun and sexy is to be single and super promiscuous. And I feel like a lot of folks associate marriage with just like things getting stale. Everyone gets fat. Everyone checks out emotionally. Uh, someone eventually cheats because you stop paying attention to each other. Yeah, it's just consciously making the decisions that you want for your romantic, for not even just your romantic relationship, but just everything in life. It's not just saying that this is what has worked or this is what has been prescribed for everyone. So I'm just going to take it blindly. It's like, well, why do I want this thing? And then how do I do it? Like you said, how do I make marriage sexy? It's not to just say, oh, well, this is just the thing we do. It's like, no, how deep can I go with this relationship? How intimate can I get? Like, how kinky can we get? You're married. Like anything is on the table between the two of you or should be. But surprisingly, a lot of those relationships they don't have any conversations around sex so that shame is still there within a monogamous union it's still there within marriage so i'm not saying everyone unless you have like a total public expression and you have an only fans or you shoot porn or you're in sex work that's the only way that you're liberated i'm not saying that at all you can be liberated within a monogamous union but a lot of people don't choose to do that because again there's that shame that's just for some reason there that most of the time isn't ours and we just accept it so I'm saying like a sexually liberated person is removing that shame, not necessarily posting it. Yeah. Do you think culture is moving in more of like a puritanical direction? I don't know if that's even the right word. I think I see it a lot. So I, it seems to be almost um, a reaction to a lot of people normalizing things like OnlyFans. And again, I'm not trying to normalize it. I don't think that that's a great path for a lot of people, but I do believe in choice and I believe in freedom of expression. So if that's what you choose to do, I support that in a non-judgmental way. But, um, and it, it's not to say like, oh, there's no consequences and everyone's like, there's a few people in the chat that are like, oh, well, it's my right to judge or it's my right to um, have my opinion or it's everyone's right to like downgrade you as a human being. Why? Why is that your right? Mm -hmm. Why is that your right to dehumanize someone? Why is it your right to put value on somebody? To me, that that's not my job. That's God's job. That's the like your job um, internally, right? Like I decide my worth. Nobody else. Yeah, and I think it. You should be dealing with it on an individual basis. Like if you, as a woman, as an individual cannot find a guy to date you because you do only fans. And then it, if it is chipping away at your soul, okay, then like that's a discussion for how to pivot or how to find a new source of income. But again, like to write that off for everybody, it, it's not really fair to do because there are women who have no problem meeting men and, and like uh, maintaining relationships and while having that be their job. So I don't know. I feel like I'm talking in circles. Uh, K Max, thanks for the super chat. Is uh, is it a true? Wait, is true a for, is it true that a former adult film star receives no royalty payments, even if a past video of yours makes one million views on a site? No money goes to you for that. How does it work in comedy? Uh, I gosh, I have one album. I think I get paid from SoundCloud maybe twice a year from it and it's like maybe 200 something dollars like it's very small it's like uh I, I i put the album out there just to sort of as a sense of accomplishment like all right here's this package jokes together send it out into the world let's work on the next hour um, there's no royalties, Zulch. Uh, Pornhub was trying to do it for a little bit. I think it's a joke. They don't really tell you how it's calculated. They might just like throw you some scraps once in a while for a video that they've been monetizing for a decade. And all of a sudden, like, here's a thousand bucks, even though it's brought them in, you know, probably millions. So, no, there's no royalties, which is why I think eventually some kind of decentralized version of content creation is going to be really beneficial, especially when it comes to adult work, but we'll see. I think it's still a little bit early for that. Yeah. I wonder if how Twitter will handle that moving forward. I've been seeing today um, several like big accounts like Tim Pool saying like, wow, Twitter just paid me 5,000, 20,000, et cetera, dollars just for, mm -hmm. so they're starting to really I don't know what it's called. If it's called like revenue sharing or um, Ad, yeah, it's the ad rev share. 
And I was like, damn, that's exciting. Now, now as they're trying to, co- well, not that they're competing with threads, but threads is trying to compete with them. So no, I think it's great. Thing. It's, it seems what's actually fair. It's almost uh, more, it, that is more decentralized version or approach to, to Twitter, kind of like what mine's is trying to do. So you're getting paid to, paid to play, paid to participate, played to paid to post which because obviously if you have an account and you have a hundred thousand followers and if an ad is getting fed there by twitter that hundred thousand is condensed because of you so you rightfully should be getting some of that profit yeah it's interesting do you have feelings one way or the other on elon are you upset with how he is or isn't handling twitter I don't really I think he's heading in the right direction. I think it's got and you can't make everybody happy and there's no such thing as free speech absolute absolution even on the internet. So then how do you mitigate like what parameters you're putting on what people can post? A lot of people are mad that there's still explicit content on there. But then if you get rid of adult content, do you also have to get rid of violent content, including Mm -hmm. news updates? Because why do we accept violence more than we accept consensual sex? That's another conversation. It's way it's okay to see someone get bombed or their leg chopped off, but heavy even forbid we see penetration. Um, so once you kind of get rid of one, it just gets tighter and tighter and tighter. And like, well, this one offended me, so we have to get it right. So you're trying to make everyone happy. So how do we have the broadest approach but still protecting the community? Yeah, I don't love that. Like, <laughs> I forget that there's just so much hardcore porn on Twitter. You're like, oh, God, it's just like a search away. Damn. I just don't follow those accounts. Like, and some of yeah. them are my friends, but uh, <laughs> same. <laughs> I, I'm like, I'm not. I can't. If you're posting explicit stuff, I don't want to see that. I don't want to be scrolling and trying to get like a news update, and all of a sudden see something fucking wild that's I don't even consider sexual. It's just like, whoa. Yeah. Um, so yeah, unfollow. Unfollow. I noticed with some some girls because me and Frank both follow a lot of adult film stars for booking for my for our what spot show on mondays on compound and i'll notice sometimes uh you'll be scrolling and you'll see like 20 posts in a row and you're like oh that's just this one account like retweeting all their friends or like um what's it called signal boosting and uh, do you know if that's a common practice I don't know. I feel like I'm so far away from all of that. So I don't I have no idea. I know that the old school model was very spammy and I know a lot of people still do that. I don't think it works. I think people are really smart. They don't want to be sold something. They want to naturally want it and just let them do it. Right. Like you don't have to shove your podcast down someone's throat or your content like they'll find it. And when they're ready for it, then they'll sign up. Yeah, I think just do good work. And that's the thing. It's like, let's say you're really, I'm really attracted to like petite Asians and that girl's retweeting all types of different women with all types of different looks. It's like, I'm not going to be, you know what I mean? Like a good, <laughs> you're not going to be that just because you retweet it. <laughs> Same thing with uh, podcasting and content. Like I was listening to your uh, video with the, I guess, what was she like a relationship expert or she, Maybe, a couple, yeah. yeah, a couples counselor. She's that, um. I, energetic love making coach <laughs> it sounds so like it sounds so like but she's spoke at like you know for like top 500 companies um wow. like she's got like a really interesting resume that's cool i've always been interested in that stuff and uh it's just kind of like i have a whole wall of like just psychology books and like relationship <laughs> books and like I, I guess that makes me like a typical chick but you can't get too like you can't get too into astrology you can't let astrology run your life like you can have crystals right just don't Uh, like you know hold them and make every decision (laughs) right exactly exactly don't let it like be the end all have like awareness outside of the thing that you're interested in but like oh yeah i love the stores that sell crystals and all that stuff because the vibe in those stores is always calm and it feels soothing and it feels like you can be creative it's all about the vibe man control the vibe (laughs) what i think setting is everything set and setting it matters more than we realize i saw this clip this was really interesting i love the new york post always uh speaking about like coaches uh i'm an elegance coach if you wear these outfits you look cheap and i think this might be aimed at gen z women who i will agree gen z women generally dress like garbage oh i went to dinner last night 
And every single Gen Z woman that came in or young young lady that came in was wearing like a cute feminine skirt or a dress and then the most hideous, dirty, beat up sneakers. Why? Thank you for noticing this. I'm like, why do Gen Z women like they just wear shitty, dirty sneakers everywhere they go? Like, it's so gross. How come are they all protesting heels? Are they protesting nice shoes? What's going on? I don't know. It makes me think that they have like gross feet. They probably don't have a great vajay. I just be a lady. They're not taking care of themselves. I don't think so. It's just really masculine. Put on a freaking heel. Don't be lazy. It's untoward. Yes. Uh, according to one fashionista, your favorite alpha may be sending the wrong message. An elegance coach has revealed the six things to avoid if you don't want to look cheap and it may surprise you. I think this is good to keep in mind, like men and women. Um, you can look casual, but it's not good to look. Uh, and you don't want to not like you have to buy all labels. I'm not into that either. I, I don't like showing labels. I don't either. Um, in a clip that's been viewed over 1.3 million times, the elegance coach who posts under the name Femme. Uh, Femme Chic underscore inspo shares her tricks for achieving a sophisticated look to start. She recommends avoiding crop tops, no matter how fashionable they are. Ooh, mm. I sometimes feel like I, I get tempted to wear one. Cause I'm like, Oh, I'm doing pretty good at the gym. Like I'm losing a little bit of weight, but you always look better with something like tucked in. If you want to frame your shape, like, yeah, just tuck the shirt in. It looks more refined. For sure. Yeah. The coach also suggests avoiding ripped jeans and cargo pants if you're seeking cargo a pants. Duh. Those haven't been acceptable for a long time. No one should be wearing <laughs> cargo anything. Get out of town. Throw those away. Men like cargo shorts because they don't carry a purse, so they keep their <laughs> what would be their purse. What items. do you have to take with you? Your screwdriver's got to go on your date. Your freaking yeah. rolling pin. I don't know. No, not necessary. Keys in your wallet. <sighs> Cargo That's shorts. All you need. I, they're the bane of my existence. I know Frank still has many pairs, but like... I threw all Eric's out when we first started dating. <gasps> I How? went in. Really? I, I don't did. think I could throw out anything. Oh, of I, I did. I, they were they were in such rough condition you couldn't even donate them. I took them and I threw them away. I said he no still, more. I tried buying him a new backpack a couple of years ago and he just wouldn't use it. He still uses his <laughs> disgusting <laughs> his old pants port from either ho- college or high school. And it, I'm like, I'm going to have to throw this in a, I don't know, not just wash it, but throw it in a car wash like by itself. It's <laughs> so gross. I hate it. I want to light it on fire. Um, <laughs> Why is the dog barking? Okay. The dog is barking. Uh, okay. What's next? But I agree. I sometimes jo- enjoy a subtly ripped jean, but this is too much. Yeah, that's too much. Uh, other tips include avoiding extra long fake nails, no matter how polished they are. I think I agree with this. I had I got fake tips for my uh, wedding last month, and I, I found myself getting so annoyed. Like, I could barely type. Mm-hmm. I could barely take my contacts out. I'd, I'd be making a bed or something, and one would pop off. I just think, like, that's too much maintenance for me. I like a clean nail. I did something that's way out of um, out of trend for me. I did like a red tip, and I hated it as soon as I walked out. Oh. Just like a, a nude nail, just you clean. Still have it right now? Yes, I yeah. have my appointment okay. on Monday. Oh, <laughs> oh, I think that's cute. I know I did it because I was like, it's trendy, but it's not me. I'm just more of a. I classic. did a, a lime green tip. Mm-hmm. I think it's cute, but little. that's subtle. This yeah. is. It doesn't match half of the things I wear and drives me crazy. You're still elegant. Don't worry. Um, (laughs) Although an oversized look is a favorite for many. uh, Yeah. Gen Z loves their oversized clothes. I don't get it. Uh, The elegance coach claims a sweatsuit is a surefire way to look cheap. Remember when we were growing up, people get the juicy Juicy. sweatsuits. I had every color. I thought Ah! I was J-Lo. I was like, look at me go. Watch these hoops. Ready. It was J-Lo. She mm-hmm. did that to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, here Blame we go J-Lo. tops. Again, like, it, this this whole outfit looks like it was $5. You know what I mean? And it's fine to buy stuff on sale, but, like, again, it's about looking cheap, not about, like, how much money you spend. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're ooh. going to the beach, that's different. But of going course. out to dinner, yeah. 
Although the TikToker claims to be a guide for elegant women, many disagreed with her tips. Elegant women do not judge, one TikToker snarked. Yes, they do. Everyone judges. <laughs> they don't look cheap. Everyone has their style, agreed another. Okay, let's watch this. Uh, let me get this TikTok. Oh, page not available. God, <laughs> gosh darn it. It worked before. Let me try refreshing. Oh, post. Here we go. Let's try this. Please work. I want to watch it. Was this just the image? I swear I was looking at this video before we went live. Okay. Well, so much for that. They basically just went over no ripped jeans, no oversized sweatshirts, no crop tops, no big nails. Yeah, I don't like big nails. They just don't seem clean. Stuff gets stuck in there. Like food. Oh. Oh, he said. Okay. I'm worried about skinny jeans, though, because all my jeans are skinny jeans. I heard they're coming back. Really? Already? Already. Because wow. people are realizing if there's any kind of weather, if there's rain, if there's snow, if there's whatever, it gets filthy. Like, what shoes do you even wear with half of that stuff? I mm -hmm. don't know. Okay, these are other elegance tips. Don't be rude. <laughs> Don't touch your empty plate. Don't bring your coat to the table. That's well, what if they don't have a coat check? Yeah. That's if it's I get it. If it's a fancy restaurant, I get it. Especially if you have a big winter winter coat. Uh don't leave the table mid meal. I feel like everybody does. What if you have to pee? Right. What if you have diarrhea? Don't speak <laughs> loudly in public places. Okay, that's easy to do. Don't gawk at others. Okay. Don't chew gum in public. Mm. Most don't people don't know how to chew gum, though. Right. Just keep it to yourself. <laughs> don't get too comfortable. Just generally. <laughs> <laughs> don't make excuses. Don't carry a large bag. Okay, this. I'm the biggest offender of this because when I go into the city on Mondays, I have a gigantic bag with me because it's like anything could happen. I'm there all day. I'll carry bags of food, drinks, my makeup bag because I'll do my makeup on the train because I'll usually be like sprinting to the car, like just making it within two minutes. I think that's normal, though, for being in the city, right? It's yeah. And that's kind of breaking the sneaker and dress rule as well, because most people, if you're commuting on foot, then you're going to be wearing something more practical on your foot than a heel. So there's always um, like adjustments to like the quote rules. And then context is also important. Like if you're going to the beach, a crop top is fine. If you're going out to a nice dinner, right. then maybe not. Right. And you can also get away with this stuff. Like when you're, I would say... I guess it depends, but like younger than 25, it kind of doesn't matter. I mean, I don't know, <laughs> unless you're trying to get a certain job or have a certain look like mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter how you dress. No, no, not when you're that young. Where would you you're want? Still a, you're still a kid. Mm -hmm. Elegance is for your 30s. I agree. Yeah. You got to grow into it. Okay. Let's see. We did talk about the age verification. I don't know if this is still relevant to our conversation. Oh, why am I getting threats? Seriously, your porn uh, VA state senator sparks outrage with age verification law. Let's see. A new age verification law in Virginia has turned the porn industry in the Commonwealth on its head, disrupting tens of thousands of users from their adult content and causing Pornhub to retaliate by ending its services in Virginia. Oh, I don't know. They, I didn't realize they did that. Mm -hmm. Virginia State Senator Bill Stanley wrote the legislation that became law at the beginning of this month. He knew the bill requiring porn websites to verify a user's age with an ID would ruffle some feathers, but he said he didn't expect threats against his family. It's like, dude, why am I getting threats? Stanley said while mocking the enraged callers on his answering machine, because you now have to put your name and address or an ID to access the Internet, bro. I mean, seriously, you're porn. It's that important to you. Threats of violence aren't the only thing looming over Stanley. Virginia's new law is also facing significant legal criticism from the Free Speech Coalition, an adult industry trade group that's long argued adult content is protected by the First Amendment, oftentimes successfully. It's unconstitutional. Free Speech Coalition spokes, 
spokesman Mike uh, Stabile, Stabile said, this is legal speech. You may not like pornography. You may be personally opposed to it, but I think everybody should be concerned about the government coming in and saying certain legal speech is subject uh, subjected to greater restriction than other types of speech. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's what you were saying, Candace. Yeah. I mean, like it or not, it is protected in our constitution. And I think that you have to be really short-sighted to argue to get it removed or to say, oh, well, because I don't personally agree with pornography that I'm just going to let that go. It's kind of like when you see people's bank accounts that are getting shut down, you're like, oh, well, I didn't like that politician. So ha, good. I don't like Alex Jones. So ha, good. But what, what happens when the regime changes and it gets flipped onto your team? So you have to think about that going into it. It's like, well, how do I protect um, the most people again? How do you How do you calibrate the right level of freedom and the right level of uh, like barriers. And I don't know, it's just, if you can control sexual expression and you're like, well, that's not free speech, then what about UFC fighting? Because mm -hmm. that's also monetizing your body. And that's, again, it's Ooh. for some reason we're more okay with violence. So you can get beat to a pulp, unconscious risk of death. That's okay. That's a, um, a valuable legal uh, protected wor like version of self-expression, physical self-expression, but pornography is not. So you have to be really careful. Right. And it's, they're all in the same vein of, okay, we're monetizing, I guess, a vice, so to speak, like, so, like watching a fight or watching porn, or um, I, I guess I could categorize, categorize all that as like, in the sort of, <laughs> it's bad, but it's good. It's bad, but it's fun category. But and why is it bad? I'm just saying people can argue like, oh, it's, you shouldn't be watching somebody fight you shouldn't be mm -hmm. you, know, you shouldn't be watching porn like mm -hmm. i guess in the sort of puritanical sense of like oh that's that's wrong or that's mm -hmm. like a sin right and then that's fun to get into right is original sin like why how are you born imperfect how are you born sullied how are you born unworthy that doesn't make any sense at all like you look at a baby and you're like, that is the most pure, beautiful, divine expression of life I've ever seen. Like there's literally nothing wrong with it. There is no original sin in that creature at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder if this it factors into there's a debate on if Twitter accounts should be allowed to be anonymous. And I think they should because there's uh, we're not going to end this trend of, of canceling somebody for their beliefs anytime soon. And I... I don't want somebody like I was able to, I got fired from my job, like for the, for not taking the vaccine, but I know that my boss wanted me out because he started figuring out where I was leaning politically. And I just, well, thankfully I had uh, like comedy and podcasting that I eventually wanted to get into full time anyway, but people will lose their, you know, lose their jobs over, over a tweet. You know, they'll, they'll find out who, who this is and people will try to get them fired and, while I understand, like, okay, it's good to have these uh, accounts at attached to a real name and face, but I don't know. I think you should allow to be anonymous. You should announce, be allowed to have, like, your internet moniker. Yeah, and then what do you do about whistleblowers as well, right? And they need to protect themselves from being come after by big conglomerates or whether it's, you know, like, big pharma, CIA, whatever. Like, people should be able to come forward if they need to to expose what is um, – like rightful information for the public. So yeah, I, I don't think, I don't think there's a problem with that. And if you figure out a way to get rid of all of the bots then what does it matter? You know, it's a real person. Yeah. Okay. And then this just, this article goes on. Were you able to do anything about getting fired for that? Because having a company I make your medical have, choices is. I have not made any moves yet i i was waiting like i was like oh am i gonna do a big expose am i gonna like name names am i gonna like i have been yeah sitting on a lot and it was my job to read my boss's emails because i was his executive assistant and uh so i have whole conversations uh about him being pissed that i used vacation days to go to january 6th you know him being pissed that I was on the Megyn Kelly show, like all things I did outside of work hours on my own time. You know, I performed stand up on the weekends uh, after work. So I have a real like paper, tra paper trail. I have like a lot of legit proof that I was targeted for my political beliefs. It's just they were he was able to get me out on the vaccine thing. 
And uh, I don't know. I don't know if this if the company has hired people back without it at this point. Like I haven't followed up to see if they've said like, okay, you can come back if you want. Like this person would not want me back. <laughs> but yeah, it just seems that I don't know now that we have more information about everything. And even before it was obviously still wrong. But to say that you have to you have to take a certain medical procedure. Otherwise, you don't have a job that doesn't seem legal. No, it's it's insane that it was allowed to happen. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I, yeah, I wonder what's what happening. Excuse, I don't know what excuse they used at the time. If they're like, oh, well, this is a state thing or, oh, this was a this is a company policy. Yeah, I'll, I'll never. But everyone it. was working virtual, too. Right. So that right. Didn't, it made no sense. Yeah. Virtually for no problem was working for about two years or so. And then all of a sudden, oh, we want everyone to come back in the building. So, yeah. And I didn't take it. And they're like, well, we're going to consider you voluntarily resigned. But I couldn't, <laughs> what is that? I couldn't get health benefits. I couldn't get unemployment insurance. Like it see, it Whoa. felt like I was fired. <laughs> but then they didn't have to pay for firing you. Whoa, that's yeah. sneaky. Yeah, they're just like, well, we're changing uh, the stipulations with which your employment uh, can happen, basically. Mm. Uh, yeah, I don't even know what I would do, where I would start. Um, it's probably honestly not worth it. Yeah. Just for your own peace of mind. But they yeah, tried to offer me a, a non disclosure agreement. They tried, they were like, oh, we'll give you 10 grand, uh, but you just can't, you know, talk about it or uh, that. that was like at a my, zero. That was going to be my about? to go package. And I just was like, yeah, no, that's not enough for me to. I'm like, I'll have to just make content about it at some point. But Probably it is interesting. Crypto dragon guy's just been popping off this whole time. Oh, any interesting comments? Or I was trying quick? to read. Some of them are really long. Some He's talking about biological urges, I think, right now. And something about children. Okay. What's happening now that I think is vile, but the general discouragement of the urge to reproduce and have children and encouraging people to pursue things that are not going to result in a happy family and keeping birth rates at replacement level. So maybe he's making the argument that porn is is somewhat to blame for, uh, I guess, our birth rates. That's a reach. That seems like we, a leap. Look at Japan, for example. They have uh, crazy censorship, and their birth rates are to the point where they're pretty much going to be extinct. Like there, there hasn't been. I think the average age of virginity over there is thirty. Um, people aren't getting married. People aren't having kids, and that's because they're trying to control sexuality. And what they did was they were, you know, they're famous for blurring out the penetration. So then, what happens is like, that sexual proclivity gets weirder and weirder and now we have hentai <laughs> so yeah. maybe don't approach it from a place of control or like draw up false conclusions that support your own moral grandstanding because it's just not true the more sexually liberated a culture is the more it tends to thrive and prosper and advance the more that you try to repress that because it is creative energy whether you like it or not you end up with a lot of countries like the middle east like look what happens with that control right you look at a lot of these um countries and you're like this looks like a different era right Every, like there is no infrastructure so those things obviously you can't say um causation but there's a high correlation between sexual repression and advancement well-being hap like happy family structures if you will um, yeah, someone's got an agenda, but I do think, I do think birth rates are, are really terrifying right now. They're low everywhere, but I don't think that, I think porn's the lazy argument for that. Well, it's impossible. You're never, you're not going to eliminate porn. It's just not, it's not going to happen in our lifetime. No, it's too profitable. Uh, people are being set up for misery and loneliness. If they buy into Marxist contempt for marriage, romance, parenthood, and family life, life doesn't have to be convenient to be happy. I agree with this. <laughs> Those are worth worthy things. Right. And who guarantees a happy marriage or a happy family? There's nothing that besides like your own work and your own connection to your partner and growing together. That's it. Nothing else is going to. Right. If you'd said it was monogamy and before porn, go down to the 1950s and you saw all of these like what they call them refrigerator moms that were just popping benzos all of the time because they were so fucking miserable. And then they were detached from their kid. They wouldn't even pick them up and hug them or show any kind of level because they were just zannied out of their mind. But yeah, monogamy and marriage. And then we loosen it up a little bit. And then these women are like, I'm so fucking unhappy. Or these men are like, I'm so unhappy. And we have divorce rates 
that are 50%. And if you want to call it monogamy, look at how many people are cheating. So is that actually monogamy or is it just non-consensual monogamy? Mm -hmm. So again, let's right. just be Sneaky. realistic here, people. Yeah. It's true. Every It seems like every generation has their has their issues and like trauma to get over. I don't know. The boomers are dying though. That's what's, that's what's important. <laughs> oh my God. We focus on the real issues here. No, some boomers are good. I kid, I kid. Anyway, Candace, you're the best. Thanks you're the best. On. Thank you for having me. I have to get you back on Simpcast. I don't know if you've done it in a while or ever. Yeah. No, it, I've done it twice, and then I was supposed to do it, and I had a sick baby, so I had to oh, cancel. Right. But again, I'm a terrible mom. I'm a terrible You're the mom. worst mom. You should hand your right. babies over to the government. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is so much happier. <laughs> uh, Candice, where can people follow you? What's coming up? What's going on? Um, you can go to at Candice Orbach. That's on all my socials. Chatting with Candice has my podcast. Uh, that's what I'm kind of working on at the most at the moment. It's what's the most alive for me. I update every week. So uh, check it out. Ooh, yes. This is a good comment from Johnny Mumbles. The media has really uglified, uglified marriage and romanticized sleeping around. I agree. I agree, sir. Yes. Everyone follow Candace uh, on Twitter. And check Except that crypto sleep. dude. Don't do that. Don't Except for me. you. Crypto I don't need dude. you. Oh, we'll turn him. We'll turn him around. <laughs> uh, yes, guys, come see me in Houston, August 11th at the Secret Group. Get tickets from my website, chrissymayer.com or from Eventbrite. And maybe I'll see you. Some of you guys at Anime Matsuri next month uh, in Houston as well. I also just booked a couple of dates for a Long Island at the brokerage October 27th and 28th. Just booked that weekend. So my Long Island peeps. Can see me then thank you guys for watching and listening and we will see you next time bye